Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you the suspenseful play called Reprieve, starring Mr. John Garfield. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live. To your happiness and entertaining guests. To your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant. As Roma Wines bring you a remarkable tale of suspense. And with reprieve and with the performance of Mr. John Garfield... Roma Wines hope indeed to keep you in suspense. This morning, my lawyer, Mr. Gurley, said he was trying to get me a reprieve. So I looked it up in a dictionary I got. It says, uh, reprieve, to suspend temporarily the execution of a sentence upon and relief for cessation from pain or ill. (laughs) Well, the first part I guess Mr. Gurley can get. He knows all the rules. But the second part, cessation of pain, and that's, that's up to me. Maybe when I've spilled it all out and put it out on a table where I can look at it, why I'm here and about the kid, about Lori, maybe then it'll come. Cessation of pain. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I can try. Okay. Name, Steve Hannibal. My old lady had a name something, I guess. She read... She read the name Stephen in a book. If she could read, which I doubt. Age 34, health excellent. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't want to sell me insurance. Because tonight I'm a state prisoner. 80483. Registered in cell 77 of the state penitentiary. That's the death cell. I'm in for murder. I was always the bright boy. But right now, I don't know. I, I'm... I'm mixed up, but good. And not about being here, and not about murder. The pen is my home away from home. Murder, why, in my social set, murder is as common as chicken pox in PS-137. No, it's that, it's that last year of honest toil that threw me for a loss. Because I wasn't mixed up in, at all in the, the night that Murph and Joe and I blew out of Chicago. That was a minor inconvenience, right in line with the way I'd always lived. Let's see, it was nearly two years ago. Murph and Joe and I and the boys had knocked off a payroll. A good, clean job, except for a couple of guys getting hurt fatally. And the Murph was tipped off that one of the boys, he didn't know who, had squealed at the cops. So Murph knew we were hot, and he came up to my room on Madison Street. I'm leaving town, Steve, tonight. Yeah, that's an idea, so am I. Yeah, yeah, we better blow. You and me and Joe, huh? And the rest of the boys? Well, I can't take care of everybody, Steve. You know how it is. Sure, I know. You take care of the ones who... You can't get along without and do your thinking for you. Oh, that ain't it, Steve. It's... Cut it. Well, okay. Well, we got around 20 grand. 23. Yeah, sure, sure, 23. With that dough, we can go down to Florida. Yeah? Yeah, and live down there all winter till the heat's off. Mm, you think that's a bright idea, don't you, Murph? Why, sure. Why not? Yeah, we take a big, shiny suite in the Paradise Hotel, pick ourselves some dolls and... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, that's just what we're not going to do. What do you mean? We're not going to travel first class, spread dough around in places like the Paradise, accompanied by any dolls. And why not? The dough is marked, bird brain. The serial numbers have been written down, and they'll be looking for that kind of dough in places where dough changes hands. Places like the Paradise. Well, we could go to some other place, like a rooming house in St. Pete. Yeah, we could be smart if we put our minds on it. Yeah, like what? Like putting that package of dough out of circulation in a safety deposit box here. You know that's all the dough we got? Sure, but... We can get along without it for the time being. It's worth a little discomfort to beat a murder rat. Okay, okay, say you're right. But we still have to leave town. We'll leave, Murph, but this is how. I figure they'll never look for you where there isn't a stall shower. So we'll fool them. We'll ride the rails. You can play that nine of hearts, Joe. Huh? Where? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to. <laughs> you were, huh? You never saw it. Not a guy outsmarts himself in solitaire. 
Hey, it's cold in this boxcar, Steve. Yeah, just pick up a phone, Murph. Tell the management I'll give you more heat. All right, all right. I just said it was cold. At a time like this, be glad it's cold. Uh-uh, Joe. Mustn't cheat. I wasn't cheating. Oh, new game, huh? Where you slip the card under when you can't play it? Ah, uh, so what if I'm cheating? It's my skin, ain't it? You're absolutely right. Ah, I wonder how, how many of the boys have been picked up. Well, I couldn't take care of everybody, Steve. Why, none of them been picked up. Why should they be? Oh, boy, that, that, that tree I've been looking for. None of them been picked up. Uh, who's protecting them, Joe, your fairy godmother? Oh, why would the cops pick them up? They know that Murph used the gun. Huh? I mean, uh, they probably guessed Murph was trigger man. Why, you did Shut up, Murph. What else did the cops probably guess, Joe? Well, uh, uh, how would I know, Steve? Honest, I only thought that maybe... Talk, uh, Joe. What else did they guess about me? Oh, nothing about you, Steve. Honest, they... they... Spill it. Spill it! They knew Murph was trigger man oh, and... That... You screaming dirty and rat, And he took you. the dough, no one else. Oh, honest, Steve, I didn't tell him anyone else was on the job. I, I thought if they picked up Murph, then, then you and me could... Hey, Steve... Steve, stop Murph. Get back, Murph. Let him finish. Go on, finish. I didn't squeal on you, Steve. Oh, you gotta believe me. Steve, you gotta... Steve, stop Murph. You can't let him. Steve, no, don't! That was Murph being trigger happy. Joe went down sort of slow and quiet. Like the movies you see of a parachute settling on the ground. I think he twitched a little. I looked out and saw the train was slowing up and we were coming into a freight yard. And not 50 feet across the tracks, I could see a couple of guys heading our way who looked like railroad dicks. I thought fast, like always. Murph was hot, very hot. And being shy on brains, if they picked him up, he'd lead them to the payroll door like a homing pigeon inside of 24 hours. And I hadn't anything pinned on me for a few years. If anyone took the rap, it would have had to be me. If I ever wanted to smell any share of that 23 grand, and this was a rap I thought sure I could beat. Unluckily, I go up for a year for manslaughter, claiming self-defense. Lucky, I bluffed my way out of it altogether. I talked fast to Murph, and when the boxcar stopped opposite those dicks, I had Murph's gun in my hand. How many of you guys in there? Three, mister. Well, pile out, boys. It's the end of the... Hey. What's the matter, buddy? One of those guys has a gun. What are you doing with that gun, brother? Uh, I, I I don't know. And what's wrong with the other guy? He. He shot him. Huh? I was over at the other end, minding my own business, and these two guys were yelling at each other, and he okay, took Okay, the... okay. Now drop that gun, mister. I'm coming in. Is he dead? Oh, dead as a mackerel. All right, mister. Tell me about it. I, I I don't know what happened. It was his gun. It just went off. Yeah? Did you see it? You over there. I didn't see nothing. I tell you, I was down at the other end of the car, minding my own business. They'd been yelling at each other for hours. I didn't pay any attention until the gun went off just now. Honest, I don't know anything. Okay, to... okay. Keep your shirt on. Looks like you're in trouble, mister. I tell you, I don't know what happened. Yeah, leave it at headquarters, buddy. Yeah. Maybe you'll remember better at headquarters. I don't know what happened. All right, Dreamy. No matter what you remember... The rap is murder. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star John Garfield, whom you've heard in the first act of Reprieve, which is Roma Wines' presentation tonight of Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Have you ever noticed the knack some women have for making their guests feel welcome? One such woman is the renowned hostess, Elsa Maxwell. And here's what she suggests you do the next time friends come to dinner. Serve well-chilled Roma California sherry before dinner and later in the evening. You'll find glorious amber-golden Roma sherry is a gracious touch that's sure to get the meal off to a good start and adds to the evening's pleasure. And don't worry about fancy glasses. It's the wine that's important. So be sure it's that good Roma wine. Because Roma wines are so reasonably priced, any family can afford to serve them regularly. Distinctive Roma wines are grown in California's choicest vineyards. 
beginning with choice wine grapes, picked and gently pressed at the top of their flavor richness, then watched over and developed with all the ancient winemaker's skill of Roma's famed wineries. The quality of Roma wines never varies. Always the same tempting flavor. Yet all this goodness is yours for only pennies a glass. No wonder more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage John Garfield as Steve Hannibal in Reprieve. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I'd been in worse spots. The charge was murder, first degree. But I knew I could cut that down. The best thing was to tame Murph loose without checking on him, and Joe was unidentified. I dreamed up a name I said I knew Joe by, read something or other. And it went down all right. And so then I settled down for what might be an extended vacation. A vacation that would earn me half of 23 grand. Only, only one thing bothered me. It seems the town we picked to kill Joe in was going through one of those reform spasms and the papers were really lathered up. And my case was made to order for them. A crime they could get holy about without stepping on any local toes. While I was waiting trial, they fried me good. And I burned about it. So that's why I didn't exactly clap hands when they told me a reporter was coming in to see me. And I didn't shout hallelujah either when I saw it was a doll. Sharp looking, all right, but still just a doll. Uh, hello. Hi, chick. You're Steve Hannibal? Yeah. I'm Laurie Ware of the News Press. Uh Uh-huh. I'd like to get your story. Look, sister, your job is writing. If you can't do it alone, you shouldn't have had the job. I mean your side of the story. Oh, isn't that nice of you to take an interest? Oh, please. I I wish you'd listen to me. Go peddle your paper somewhere else. Please. Don't you understand English? Look, I don't blame you for being suspicious of me. You see, I know the papers haven't been fair to you. I know they've been trying your case before it comes to trial. So it happens every day. And I feel sure there's more to this case than has been told. I I got a feeling that... (laughs) You gotta be careful of those feelings, baby. I have a hunch that you didn't do it. Maybe you were framed. So, uh, what if I was? Well, I don't know how much I can do. Except I know that if you have a story, I can get it printed. And, uh, and, uh, that will make all the difference? I don't know. At least when it comes to picking your jury, there'll be some people in this town who haven't made up their minds. Well, uh, there's something in that. Well? Okay. I'll tell you the real McCoy truth. Oh, that's wonderful, Steve. I'll take it down. Well, there isn't much to tell. I was just what the papers call an innocent bystander. I was asleep when it happened. Uh, how many men were in the boxcar? Before I went to sleep, there were six or seven. When the shots woke me up, I saw two guys jump off. We were moving pretty slow then because the train was coming into the yards. But at the inquest, the police said you were holding the gun. Yeah, sure I was, yeah. The cops yelled at me, and I saw... Well, I saw I was holding it. Someone had planted it on me while I was half asleep. And then the old boy in the corner said I'd done it. Yes, he, he said that you were fighting with... I know, him. that I'd been fighting with Red. Well, I don't think he meant to frame me, but he, he kind of got me mixed up with one of the guys who scrammed. That's it, Steve. That's what, baby? If you'd done it, you would have jumped off. You wouldn't just stand there waiting to be arrested with a gun in your hand, or, or you would have thrown the gun out. Well, they blow clam I didn't have time, but... But, uh, it's an angle. And I'll pound it, Steve. I'll get your lawyer. Yeah. I guess I'll, I'll need one. You'll need all the help you can get. <laughs> What a doll. (laughs) Sold on me, even before she got the pitch. And what made my hand all aces was that the girl could really write. She had the news press giving me more space than the World Series. Well, the other papers had to pick it up. And by the time my trial came up, why, (laughs) I was local hero number one. An orphan child the whole town wanted to adopt. So no one, least of all of me, was much surprised when the jury filed back into the jury box with their decision. Have the gentlemen of the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will you read the verdict? We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty as charged. Oh, 
was Steve. <laughs> well, your work, kitten. What do they say? The pen is mightier than the sword? Oh, I'm so happy I could help Steve. Well, you don't see me crying, honey. Come on, you want to dance? Yeah, but... Come but on. I, I want to talk first. Have you got a home you're going to or, or a job? Now, look, kid, you've been Girl Scout enough today. Let's dance. Please tell me, Steve. I'm worried about you. I'm going to winter in California and summer in Maine. You haven't any place to go. Say America first. That's my motto. Steve, I don't want to butt in, but... Well, Harry Singles will give you a job. Yeah? <laughs> Doing what? In the circulation department. Ah, uh, you're kidding. Well, it wouldn't be such a good job to start, but I know you could work up, Steve, and you'd like Harry. Uh, nine hours a day, five days a week. Is that it? Five and a half days. Steve Annabelle, punching a time clock. I, I suppose I'll get a social security number and everything, huh? Don't you have one? Unemployment insurance income tax? That's a lot of legality. Legality? Ah, oh, skip it, kitten. Let me think. You know... You know, I might, I might just take a whirl at that job. Oh, Steve, I think that's wonderful. It's not so much the job, but if you and I uh, have a lot of unfinished business, baby, and we can't get it all done in one day. Right now, I want to dance. Come on, baby. That was the old brain working, see? You see, I had counted on drifting up a little safe to join up with Murph. I didn't know where he'd gone, but I... I figured I'd be able to find him when the heat was off. But when Laurie said job, well, it was kind of new angle. I could stay right here in town, pull down enough dough to get by, and maybe a little on the side. It was the safest spot I could possibly be in for a long time. Uh, I went down to the newspaper office with Laurie the next morning and was hired. First time in my life such a thing ever happened to me. Harry Singles, he was a sharp guy from any racket. Working with him, I got so I didn't mind. Of course, the hours were very regular, all daytime, and I had to put on a clean shirt now and then. But always I had that 23 grand to think about. And the kid, Laurie, I couldn't have squired a better doll in Chicago, New York, or any place. Only sometimes, sometimes she made me nervous. Let's not go out tonight, Steve. Let's stay here in my place, huh? I'll cook something. I don't know. It don't seem right. <laughs> What doesn't seem right? <laughs> Seeing a doll with class and an apron? Why, well, I, I can't get used to it. Oh, you will eventually. After all, you're used to being a working man now. Well, now, don't be too sure, baby. Steve, you know you love it. I don't know. Sometimes I get the itch to move on. Forget the itch, Steve. A rolling stone gathers no moss. Yeah, so they tell me. But I saw some moss once, and I still wonder, what does a stone want with moss anyway? You see what I mean? Laurie kept telling me how much I liked being a pillar of society so that sometimes even I began to wonder. And then Harry, Harry started shoving raises at me and titles. Well, inside of no time, I was a district manager. Then I sat down and I figured the dough angle and that gave me a shock. Because even if it was legal, I was making more dough week in and week out than I had with Murph and the boys. Well, the Chicago stick-up stayed hot, and I didn't hear from Murph, so I let it ride and kept working. Along about then, the papers were in a lather again all over reforms, and the town was crawling with rackets, and Laurie was working on the stories. But one night, Laurie was typing a story in a room, and I was in the living room waiting for her to finish. I'll be with you in a minute, Steve. One more paragraph. And that's uh, finished for tonight? Yeah. What is it, buying hats again? Oh, it's a letter I got in the mail, right here on the desk. Oh, the local wolves are moving in, huh? Much more exciting. Wait a Lay off, or we'll measure you for a coffin. You have 24 hours to quit your job. <laughs> First time I ever got anything like that. You want to read my answer? Your answer? Yeah, my article for tomorrow morning. I've written all about the note and why it was sent to me. Yeah? Well, why do you figure well, there's an out-of-town mobster who's moved in on the local rackets, and he's making a good thing of it. I found out about him three days ago, and I've really tracked him down. Yeah, who is he? Well, here he goes by the name of Dude Ringler. But I knew that was an alias. I finally find out that he's a former big-time operator from Chicago. He's wanted there for a lot of things, including murder. Yeah? I'm going to print it in the paper, and he'll be picked up just about the time the papers hit the street. Oh, I, you, you, you told the cops, huh? Um, not yet, I... I thought you could go down with me. And uh, uh, what, what, what's the guy's name in Chicago? I don't know all of it. He, he headed up a gang there. They call him Murph. I 
got that roller coaster feeling, only worse. I still can't figure it. She was only a half-baked doll moving into territory where anyone would likely get clipped. Why should I care? But something funny happened to me, and she could see it. Steve? Steve, what's the matter? Now, well, you, you gotta lay off, Lori. You, you gotta quit. Because of that ridiculous note? Don't ask me why. Just quit. Oh, I certainly won't quit, don't you see? That's just what he wants me to do. Okay, I'll tell you. I know Murph. You know him? And he's trigger happy. He's a rattlesnake in pants. Well, then that's all the more reason Listen why to I... me. I don't know why I'm doing this. I never figured... Well, I never missed figuring percentages before in my life, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you before I wise up. What, Steve? You remember when you got my true story when I, when I was up for that murder rap? Of course I remember. Well, that was all a pipe dream, sweetheart. Something for the books. You lied to me? You did kill Red? His name wasn't Red. He was a slimy, evil little punk from a mob I ran with. Named Joe Tanelli. Mob? And he wasn't killed by me. He was killed by another guy who, who was in the car. He was killed by Murph. I covered for Murph because he was hot. Steve, then you... Listen. You... They'll want you for those jobs, too. They... Shut up. I'm listening. What? What is it, Steve? I, uh, I thought I, I heard someone in the other room and the door closed. You're just imagining it, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, I guess I am. This being a squealer takes my skin off. Oh, Steve. But you got the story, baby, short and sweet. Now, you can do what you want with it. Quit your job and live, or turn me in, too. What a doll. She cried on the front of my shirt, and then she smiled. And she called Harry Singles with me sitting there and told him she quit. She told him she was getting married the next morning to me and, well, I played along. Then I left her. And after telling him to button her lip and keep the door locked, I started to go find Murph to check on the 23 grand and put him wise so he'd lay low. I could see he still needed me to think for him. But, but there, there was something wrong. Something very wrong. I, I felt like I was cracking up. I... So, well, I, I let it ride until the morning. I, I was climbing up, climbing up the stairs to pick up Glory at nine on the dot. And for some reason, I was feeling pretty good. Open up, chick. It's me. Open. <laughs> Hello, Murph. Still trigger happy, huh? Hello, Steve. And you don't have to call me names. You're up kind of early, aren't you, Murph? I was making a little call on your doll. Yeah, I see you was. She wasn't a bad-looking doll, Steve. You didn't have to plug her. She quit her job. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Well, still, she knew too much. She wasn't going to use it, Murph. Maybe. You told her about Joe. You shouldn't have done that, Steve. So it was you I heard in here last night, huh? No kidding. You heard me? Yeah, I heard the door close. And you heard me tell her, huh? Yeah. This, uh, working legal has given you bad habits, Steve. But I'll forget it. Come here. Come over here. Just look what she'd have wrote. Dude Ringer. Alias Murph. Alias we don't know how many other names. Wanted in a half a dozen cities for murder, larceny, and kidnapping. That wouldn't have looked good, Steve. She wasn't gonna use it. No. Well, don't let it worry you. Well, it's about time we picked that 23 grand. Hey. Hey, what's up, Steve? You shouldn't have put your gun down, Murph. What's eating you? You shouldn't have put it down. Steve, you're nuts. Because I'm going to drill you, Murph. I've always wanted to drill you. And before I wise up, I'm going to do it. That time, that time the neighbors heard it. I didn't care. I kept pumping lead. When they came in, I, I was standing over Murph holding the gun. Same gun he used to kill the kid. So the cops got me for both of them. <laughs> both of them. And the Joe and the payroll job, too. They really thought they hit the jackpot with me. I didn't give them any arguments. It wasn't any use. But see what I mean? I'm mixed up. You see? I've always been a sharp guy. I, I could have beat the game. 
Murph was right when he knocked off the kid. She did turn. Well, she did know too much. It's the way things work out in our set. Now, why should I get a case of highs over a doll getting drilled? Well, I can't, I can't figure it out. And, well, now I'm trimming my, my fingernails waiting for Mr. Gurley to get a reprieve. <laughs> and I, I'm mixed up about that, too. Because in the dictionary, it's a word that's got kind of two meanings. And the way I feel, they don't mesh. They cancel each other out. To suspend temporarily the execution of sentence upon and relief for cessation of pain or ill. <laughs> well, any time now. Hello, Mr. Gurley. Hello, Steve. That's the good word. Now, boy... Turn your collar around, Mr. Gurley. You're going to talk like that. Spill it. It wasn't any use, Steve. No reprieve. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. So I... Uh, I got until 6 a.m. No reprieve. No reprieve? I wouldn't say that, Mr. Gurley. I draw definition number two. I get secession of pain. And so closes Reprieve, in which Roma Wines have brought you John Garfield, a star of tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Before our star returns to the microphone, let me say a word for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. Genuine cordiality, unaffected simplicity. These are the qualities that have made Elsa Maxwell's hospitality famous the world over. In her own words. Friendliness and hospitality begin at home. And there's no better or simpler way than with a glass of distinctive Roma wine. I suggest Roma Vermouth chilled as a most delightful aperitif, or next time you serve cocktails, flatter your guests by using this delicious California Roma Vermouth. You'll find that zestful, full-bodied Roma Vermouth brings delicious flavor to your favorite mixed drinks. The goodness of Roma Vermouth comes from using almost a hundred different herbs and specially selected vermouth-type wines. So I say, whenever the occasion calls for vermouth, either sweet or dry, be sure to serve delightful Roma vermouth, made and bottled in the heart of California's famous vineyards. You can depend on Roma vermouth and all other Roma wines to be always delicious, always pleasing to the palate of unvarying fine quality. This week is being celebrated as National Restaurant Week. Let us all join in saluting America's restaurateurs, who, despite food and personnel shortages are doing such a splendid job. This is John Garfield with a message from your government. Four million crop corps workers are needed to help the regular farm labor forces harvest the 1945 crop. We face the most serious farm labor shortage since the beginning of the war. Everyone with or without farm experience can help. Crop corps work is war work, which will pay you the prevailing farm wages. Get in touch with your county agricultural agent or local government employment office. Thank you. John Garfield appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Studios and will soon be seen as Al Schmidt in their production, Pride of the Marines. Next Thursday, you will hear Mr. Dana Andrews as star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>